What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon and today we've got a quick MIG welding project. It's going to be sort of a decorative project. Let me bring you in and show you what we're going to be working on. So last week I built this floating corner shelf in my grandson's bedroom. But what you can see is, is that he's got a bunch of books that are kind of laying here, so I want to make a set of bookends, and I think I got a pretty good idea using some scrap metal. Here's my idea, although it could be a little bit challenging. This is a sprocket off my KTM dirt bike, and what my thoughts are is that I'll take some two inch flat bar, bend it into like a 90, and then make a bracket out of this. So this will be cut in like quarters. It's gonna be using Probably my Yes Welder, uh, new welder that I just picked up, and my portable bandsaw and a few other tools. But what might make it challenging is I think this interior piece is aluminum, and this exterior piece is steel. As long as we can get some weld against the steel to keep this aluminum clamped against the L bracket, it should work. I don't know. We'll, we're just winging it like I do with all my projects. I just kind of build it in my head and we put it together as we go. So let's give it a shot. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I kind of want to keep that little decal. So I'm going to split this. I'm thinking down where it, you know, connects onto the hub. That should be kind of like roughly centered. So we'll kind of just draw this out. It's, it's probably not going to show up good because it, the sprocket is still a little wet from where I just finished washing it. And we'll go something like this. And I can just check it with a speed square, make sure it's good. That should be pretty close right there. So that and that. Now hopefully this doesn't completely come apart because you see how this is like held. So this part is aluminum all of this. This is steel, so it prolongs the life of the sprocket longer. But then it has these little like screwed in little grub screws here that basically just kind of like take up a space and put friction in it. And then the other side, it's kind of like flush. So I don't know how this is gonna work cutting it. It may completely come apart. We'll find out. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this portable bandsaw that I built. Well, I built the stand. This is what I'm calling the ultimate portable bandsaw. I absolutely love this thing. I use it all the time. If you want to know how I built it, I'll put a link up above. All right, let's see how this thing's gonna cut. Yep, that is pretty sweet. So we got one for one side. Now we just got to make one more. And surprisingly, that stayed on there. So I'm not going to mess with it too much because I don't want it to come off. Once we weld it, then we don't have to worry about it. So we've got our pieces all cut. And I've got some eighth inch by two inch flat bar. And what we're going to do is we're going to bend a 90 on it. And it looks to be roughly 6 inches to the inside of that. So we'll go 7 just to give us a little bit of extra. Put a little mark at 7. Draw a line across. And that's the line where we're going to bend it. So, let's see, now we'll just put some marks on it so we know right about where we want to cut it. And again, everything is just kind of like approximate. I don't take a whole lot of measurements or put a lot of time into it. On these little artsy type projects, guys, the younger me would probably be like super, like having to get this really precise and making sure that this leg was identical to that leg. At the end of the day, guys, I mean, if that's what matters to you, then go ahead and do it. I've kind of learned to let go of these, like, 
OCD type things and I find my, my life is sometimes a lot simpler and easier um, and my projects come out a lot better because I'm not hanging up on these little intricate details but again this leg is I don't know quarter of an inch longer than that and the same thing on the other side so we'll put a mark across it and since we're using the bandsaw pretty exclusively we can just cut it with a bandsaw Check this. Oh yeah, she's not square. We gotta make it square. All right, we got it pretty darn close right there. So that's pretty close to square. Square enough for a bookshelf. How's that sound? Yeah, that'll look pretty cool. Check that out, guys. I think that's gonna look all right. What do you think? I'm gonna be using my Yes Welder. It's my MIG 205DS. This is a inverter based welder. It's 120, 240 capable for voltage, and it's a multi-process. This does MIG, TIG, and stick. And because of the multi-process, you can weld everything with it except for aluminum. Get this fired up. Turn on our gas. Open it all the way. You stand it off to the side and we're actually going to be running about 15 CFH of gas once we toggle the solenoid. If you want to know more about this welder, how it works, I'll have some links to some other videos, guys, up above. And you can also check it out down in the description. You'll save yourself a little bit of money by buying it through those links. I can tell you that I've been using this welder a lot lately. And if you guys are looking to get into an affordable welder that's like a multi-process, you can do a bunch of different things. This weld is pretty impressive. I'm, I'm impressed so far. I have not dug into the TIG features of it yet. We will be in an upcoming video. But as far as the MIG welding features go, this thing's pretty incredible. Right now, I'm running it on 240 volts. And this machine is uh, what's called Synergic. And this works very similar to my Fronius. So I'm going to set the thickness of metal. And it's 8th inch, which is also 3.1. And because it's synergic, it automatically sets the voltage. So now it's set the voltage at 19.9 volts and the amperage at 137. It just does everything automatically by based on a couple different parameters. So you can either set it by thickness, you could toggle uh, by amperage, you could toggle by voltage, however you want to do it, and it sets it up automatically. So I really like that feature. You don't have dials and and indicators to, to figure out or even charts necessarily to look at uh, when, you, when you're doing MIG welding or flux core welding because you can just set it up by material thickness and it'll automatically set the parameters and get you close and you can dial it in up or down from there. Like I said guys, this is a pretty impressive welder for the money. Go, uh, go check it out. I think you'll be real happy with it. If you guys are looking to buy a welder, uh, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. I say I really like that synergic feature. I use it all the time on my Fronius. I was actually quite pleasantly surprised to see that this has one. All right, we're just kind of roughing it out. We're going to weld it only where the metal is, uh, the steel, and I'm going to just tack it. Looks pretty cool, huh, guys? So the next thing I'm going to do is radius the corners. Now, the easy thing to do would have been if I radius them first, and then I could just bring it up to my portable bandsaw and then snip it off. But as you can see, I have like a washer that I use to radius the edges. It will not fit in there. So what I'm going to do is just line up the two edges of a flat washer. The bigger the washer, the bigger the radius. And line it up. 
then just to help hold everything in place to make things easier grab a pair of ice grips clamp it down and then I like to use a scribe especially if I'm going to be uh, grinding it back and that's what we're going to be doing I'm going to be using a grinder uh, to bring it to this point so I've got that one and we'll clamp this side and we got that one perfect and all I'm doing is just using my scribe, digging it in. And the reason I'm using a scribe to do this, guys, is sometimes if you use a mark or a marker, the heat from grinding will actually like burn the mark away and you won't be able to see it. If you use a scribe like I'm using here, uh, it'll stay there and you don't have to worry about the heat uh, making it disappear. I don't know if you can see the lines. It might be a little difficult, but they are there. And I'm going to grind right to them. To save my grinder wheel a little bit guys, although I can't see the exact marks from the top side, I know that I'm safe to cut a little bit of that corner off just to clip it. So I'm just going to clip it off with this. Again that will save my abrasive wheel and it will just make it go that much quicker on that other process. Now I'm just going to quickly take it over to the wire wheel and get all my welds cleaned up. I cleaned it up, brought in the sink and just used some different degreasers and chemicals on it. And I'm real happy with how that looks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint everything except for the sprocket. So I'm going to mask it all off. I really like doing uh, projects like this, guys. It's They're kind of fast. They're kind of fun. And, uh, you know, they're just, it's like a custom thing. You know, you're making something that's, you know, you're giving it as a gift to somebody. And, you know, it, it's just fun to do. It's fun to make stuff. This is an old sprocket off my KTM, like I told you earlier. This has just been sitting in my scrap bucket for, for quite a while. And now it's going to serve another purpose. So there, got it all taped off guys. Now all you got to do is just spray it whatever your favorite color is and I'm just going to spray it with whatever I got so I'll have to go check the cabinet. You can't really go wrong with hammer black paint so that's the color we're going to paint that bracket. And to help dry things up guys I just use a hair dryer. You could also use a heat gun which I have also. Three coats of that and we'll be in business. And here it is guys, all finished. I am super happy how this came out. This is going to work really cool. So just to keep things so it didn't uh, scour up the shelves and stuff, I put just some little felts on the bottom. And then you can set it down, you have to worry about them scratching. But yeah, this thing came out awesome. I'm really happy with it. So I'll show you all the way around. Yeah, I love the feel of it too, like it's all slippery feeling. You can see with a hub bolted up. I don't know, I just think it's kind of cool, you know what I mean? It just kind of gives it a little, 
unique story. But you can see how kind of the sprocket's kind of dinged up. It's called a twin ring by Renthal, and that's what I ended up replacing replacing this one with. It's actually, I put another twin ring on it, but I actually, I think it might be orange, the one I replaced it with, but... Yeah, so that's going to work pretty cool, huh, guys? And that's all there is to it, guys. A nice, quick project that you guys can bang out. Doesn't take a lot of time. You could probably pick up one of these sprockets if you went to a local motorcycle yard and just asked, do they have any old junk sprockets laying around? I'm sure they probably do. This would make a great gift, especially with Christmas coming up. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. If you're wondering about any of the tools that I'm using, click the links down below. I'll have uh, discount promo codes you can get some money off, or you can just find out more about the stuff that I'm using. I also got some merch, guys. Be sure to check that out. Till next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, see ya. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye. Come, come.